what are the signs that one can look for and saying burnout is on the way approaching me like a bullet train? So that's a million dollar question, right? I think uh, if we can add on top of that question, so it's a question more on how do I achieve more? Um, how do I love what I do? Um, be able to be present with my family. Sometimes you're so much in the game, you are not realizing how intense the game is. Hi everyone from Round Glass. This is Living with Sunny. I'm your host, Sunny Singh. I'm here with my co-host and friend, Thomas Power. Hey. Hi, Thomas. Today, our topic of conversation is burnout. And uh, we're going to talk about burnout from a personal perspective to a professional perspective. What are the signs of it? How do you tackle it? How do you see it coming? Uh, how do you deal with it? We'll, 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 we'll read the entire spectrum of burnout uh, with our guest today, who is Alan Ting. Alan is a wellness expert, a burnout expert, an author, a TEDx speaker. Welcome, Alan, to the show. I appreciate having me. Thank you so much. Uh, it is wonderful to have you. The last six months for me have been uh, extremely lack of a better word, busy, which basically means stressful. I have experienced burnout in, 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 in different ways. And, and so, so I thought this is, you will be a great guest to have because my situation is not unique. And especially in the COVID times and the COVID years, uh, and the fact that if you look at today, there is no boundary between your professional life and your personal life because you're pretty much working from home. How do you see burnout coming? What are the signs that one can look for and saying burnout is on the way approaching me like a bullet train. Yes, for definitely. Uh, some of the, here's a, some of the tall, tall signs of being burnout. And the reason why I know this is I know burnout very intimately is I've experienced this myself. Uh, a couple of things to start off with is when you feel like you're being short toward people, you're being hurt, where like you have little or no patience at all, or maybe sometimes you feel like you're out of control meaning that you're trying to keep your head above water. And every time you get your head above water and there's another wave come in and another wave come in and another wave come in, and or you might be feeling like you're wired all the time, you can't sleep, um, you have insomnia, or, or you just feel like your mind just keep going and going and going at like a million miles an hour. And what happened is those very tall, tall signs that we tend to ignore, I'm like, ah, just, just, it is what it is, this is what life is about. And what happens is like, my analogy is, is you're building this pressure cooker and that pressure keeps building, building, building. Now it doesn't, it's not gonna explode day one, but consistent and long-term duration of that pressure build. When somebody says to you the wrong thing or looks at you the wrong way, and that's when things gets blown up. So Alan, can I ask you, how did you discover burnout? What's your own story? So I was working at a startup and um, like just like any other projects, the projects were delayed. We came over budget and we had to serve the client. So our managers, our project managers asked us to stay late overnight, um, even work on weekends. And as like I was telling you before, this pressure started building up. Right? It's also we're getting the top down pressure from upper management as well, because this is a very, um, a very marquee client that we're, we've been working with. As that pressure continued to build, um, I finally got some time to unwind. That very, and I didn't know any of those tall, tall sounds, right? Like I just, I'm, I'm, I'm type A personality. I'll just will power through it. Everything's going to be fine. I got this all, all under control. One night, Friday night, um, my then girlfriend, who I've been together for four years, we're having dinner together. And usually we're, on Friday nights, we have TV and dinner and we're watching a movie and we're eat. So halfway through the movie, my then girlfriend said to me, Alan, go wash the dishes. I'm <laughs> like, babe. Um, we're watching a movie right now. Let's finish the movie. I have always washed the dishes. Um, just let me kind of unwind and watch the, watch the movie. And she goes, and she's under a lot of stress too, right? So she's like, you need to go wash the, the dishes right now. And I look back, like we just started arguing and that entire thing exploded. So what I alluded to at first is when somebody said to you the wrong thing at the wrong time, or maybe even looked at you the wrong way, that's when I totally exploded. And why this is so important is because a lot of people think, ah, just burnout. But realistically, burnout affects every aspect of our lives because that was the ticking time bomb that went off that affected my relationship. Started off with washing dishes, as small as it seems, and actually affected my health. It affected my physically and mentally. And every morning I woke up, I just want to go back to sleep. And this is after sleeping 12, 14 hours a day. I just, 
I felt weak. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I, at the time, I didn't know I had chronic stress and chronic fatigue. So I was on it. This went on for like six, six months. So I realized something's got to change. I was riding my bicycle in Golden Gate Park. I was living in San Francisco at the time. And I saw these, uh, uh, these bunch of Tai Chi practitioners. They're, just, they're moving really slow and they're very zen out. And you know, I, I'm Chinese and that's part of my heritage. And as a kid, I used to laugh at them like, oh, I'll never do that. Oh, that's so slow. This is so boring. But for whatever reason, I decided to go try it out. And that was a, a game changer. So I was able to manage my pain, my stress, my fatigue better. And then shortly after, I was introduced to yoga by a, a colleague of mine. And a combination of these uh, Eastern healing arts, like recharge my energy and uh, recharge my batteries. So during that time, I found a quote that really resonated with me. This is from like 20 years ago and even to now. And it's a quote from Dalai Lama, uh, which made me realize what, what are the priorities in my life. So the Dalai Lama, Lama said, if I may share a quote with you, is that when they asked him, when they asked him about what surprises him most about humanity, he answered, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. And then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he's so anxious about the future that he doesn't live in the present moment. And the result that he doesn't live in the present or the future. And he lives as he's never going to die. And he dies as he never really lived. That's a very powerful, powerful quote. I've, 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 I've read that, but it's still not addressing the epidemic of burnout. How do I see burnout coming my way? What, am I, what are my symptoms, me as an individual? And then we'll come back to the professional side of things too, because I think, you know, the, the, the pressures of work put on you by the company at large or your team or your leaders uh, are sometimes unwarranted and unnecessary, but we'll come to that. But I want to, I want to hear what do I, what will I feel? What will I see? What will I, what, will, what are the symptoms of burnout? So that's a million dollar question, right? I think uh, the, the, if we can add on top of that question, so it's a question more on how do I achieve more? Um, how do I love what I do? Um, be able to be present with my family and basically achieve everything that I wanted to do, right? So <laughs> I think it's more on, that, on top of that question. Now, going back to the Dalai Lama quote, like I, think, I think that's only one part of the puzzle. Yes, it's absolutely necessary to take care of our health, right? That's the Eastern philosophy. And if we continue to follow the Eastern philosophy, what happens in the Western culture? Uh, we bliss out, we sit there and meditate, and then we meditate long enough, people are going to come by and take our couches away. <laughs> we still got to cover our finance. So, ah, it's so frustrating, right? And this is my journey through trying to find out, like, what's, what's, what's working, what's not, and putting this puzzle together and in order of specific sequences. So I realized that part doesn't work because I'm also ambitious. I, I'm, I'm also inspired to... to uh, to continue to further my career. So going back, what I really found was um, I did the last, last 17 years, I did a, a ton of research um, and seeing what people have done to, to not get burned out, to have a full live life and, and love what they do and be present with their family. So I looked at all that. And there's a quote that I'd love to share from Tony Robbins um, said, Success leaves clues. What that means is if people's done it in the past and they've done it successfully, go model off their journey. Go model off their success. Don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. And then I looked at Oprah, and, and Oprah has been on, on TV for over 25 years. Yes, about 17 years in, she came in. It's like, you know, I don't know if I want to do this anymore because she was going through a burnout. But she carried on for the rest of the 25. And like, well, what does she do? to continue her passion, her career, and, and, and all of that. And then I looked at Ariana Huffington, uh, and, and again, m many other people as well, and I looked at their patterns and how they succeeded. Ariana Huffington, who ran the you know, su uh, very successfully Huff Huffington Post. But then one night, she was so tired that she nodded her head and punctured like part of her eyebrow, so she had to go to the hospital and get seven stitches. And literally for her, that was a wake-up call. So understanding all these different folks, I was able to put together a formula, and it's something to call AIR, A-I-R, something for very easy for us to remember and something for us to be very easy to implement. The A stands for aspiration. The I stands for integration. 
and the R stands for rejuvenation. The aspiration is in place, right? You're, you're leading a company, you're building these apps, and it's great, but then you run and you sprint, how fast and how long can you sprint and run for? So the analogy is like sprint versus a marathon, right? Is your life a sprint or a marathon? I mean, we get it, it sounds very cliche, but when you are, when you fully aspirate it and you're charging 100%, some people 110%, you're going to get depleted, exactly what I did. What I did. And your, your body doesn't physically tell you because your adrenal burnout. So you need some rest period. If you ask any uh, professional uh, athletes, they're going to tell you one of the rookie mistakes is overtraining, right? So you got to have rest period. Now, going back to the original question, I think it's more like, how do I go for work and how do I go for like life? And it's, it's, the, it's, it's segregated when it actually should be integrated together. Because you cannot split work and life. When you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's where integration comes in. You want to set expectation with your spouse. So if I'm working on a project that's three months straight and sometimes require me to work on weekends, I'll let my family know, my spouse know that, uh, hey, this is a very important project I'm working on, working on. This is my aspiration. But let's set a time for family time. We can take three days off the grid after this three months and go to Disneyland or go somewhere to take some family time. So setting expectation, letting know when we're taking time off, those are the key elements to having a work-life integration. Keyword is integration. It's not this or that. The only thing is going back to rejuvenation, take some time off to recuperate so that you can recharge your battery and continue going. So whenever you run into um, a burnout issue, you want to take a look at three things, three areas. Um, the aspiration part. You might hate your job right now, but go find something that you love to do because when you love that, you have aspiration. Now, uh, the integration part is with your family. This is especially when you are in a relationship or when you have kids. Okay. And then the third part, the rejuvenation part, make sure you take time off to recuperate your body. I believe that when we're ever burnt out, look at some look at these three areas and see which in your life that you need most to recuperate. And I believe that you too can either avoid burnout and or recover from burnout. You know, each individual can race towards burnout, um, can experience burnout and all the damage that is caused, whether it's frustration, anger, uh, venting out. But I think the, the way it's just not being aware that you're being burnt out because sometimes you're so much in the game, you are not realizing how intense the game is. And therefore, it is also incumbent upon every individual, personally and professionally, who is engaged with somebody else in some way, shape or form a relationship to watch out and saying how hard or how inappropriately or how irresponsibly or I have some responsibility towards ensuring that the person I know, I work with, I live with, my friend is not getting burnt out. But I like to have a conversation around that, that how can I help my partner, my girlfriend, my spouse, my professional colleague, and watch out for them just like they would watch out for me. So like I mentioned to any change, it starts with awareness. And a lot of times we think, well, we got to come fix, with, you know, we even I have situational awareness, or maybe um, I have started meditating already. I, I feel really great. and I really feel calm and centered. And I need to go out and change other people. So if you guys have kids out there or if you guys have employees or staff that you work with, how well does it work when you're trying to change other people? It doesn't work, right? So the, the awareness has to start with myself. The change has to start with myself. So the part where, um, where it really helps is through meditation as one of the ways to avoid burnout, to feeling more centered, more grounded. So if I may share a, um, a very quick meditation and the premises behind it, and they've done a lot of scientific studies around, around this, that when we're stressed out, and they, they put, you know, measuring, uh, measuring monitor on our heart and our brain waves. So on our heart, it's called uh, the EKG. On our brain is the EGG. So when we're stressed out, when we're frustrated, when we're angry, that brain wave is not aligned. There's like all sporadic all over the place. But the moment we're about to teach you, the moment you get calm, you get centered, you get grounded, you go, go back into your heart energy, miraculously, those, brain, those waves, EKG and EGG, all start to line up again. And I like to invite you to go ahead and place both hands on top of your heart. Take a nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. 
Good. A fuller deep breath in. A fuller deep breath out. And the deepest breath you take in all day on this podcast. And as you breathe, I like to invite you to think about three things that you're grateful for today. It could be two small things, one big thing, whatever that is for you. And when you're done, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Now coming back, I don't know about you, but going back, just feel your energy level. Do you feel more calm? Do you feel more grounded? Do you feel more centered? Now, in this space, why this is really important is because, especially if you have kids, when they're running around and you're panicking, you're freaking out, what happens to them? They pick up your energy too, and they're starting to freak out. Now, when you're in a team environment and you're in crisis mode, when you as a leader, you're panicking, and what happens to the rest of the staff? Oh my God, the leader is panicking. We got to be panicking too. So when we're collected, when we're calm, when we're centered, we have clarity. And when we have clarity, we know the directions we need to take. Every time you speak, Alan, I start closing my eyes and doing deep breaths because I want to keep having this five minutes. Is there a way or what kind of ways are there? Because I notice when I leave my smartphone at home and I don't use it, uh, I think less. I have less thoughts. Is, is there a way to think less? Great question. So now the question is, why do you want to think less? What is the outcome that you want to get out of it? Now, a lot of people think, oh, I just want to clear my mind. Uh, I'll, listen, I'll use you know, the app, uh, meditation app, whichever ones to, to, to feel stress relief. Yes, that's great. Now, in a busy space, we're always going to fill up our mind. The moment we get to clear our mind, the moment we get to have more space for creativity, you know, whatever goals that we're trying to meet. So the moment that we clear out our mind, it gives us more room for other things to come in and fill up. So that's the other benefit of meditation. Very well said. When we end our conversations, we usually have a call to action for our audience. And this is, this is, my, this is what I implore everybody to do today. Depending on the pressures of our lives, the stresses in our lives, we might sooner or later experience burnout. And so today, or the next day when you wake up, look at these signs of, is something causing you irritation? Is something causing you anger, frustration? Were you losing control of your state of being? Just become aware of it. Is that happening to you? Because if that is happening to you, you are witnessing, you are experiencing a symptom of what we call burnout. That awareness is the starting point, the first step towards addressing burnout. What a delightful conversation. I'm sure Thomas, just like me, have tons of other items to discuss and questions to ask. Uh, we'll hope to see you again soon. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Again, such an honor and a privilege. For more information on burnout, you can go to www.alanting.com, A-L-L-A-N-T-I-N-G. Alan also has a very good book on burnout called Instant Energy Method. It's available on Amazon. Do check it out. We want to hear from you. Whether it's your journey of holistic well-being, you have feedback about the show or questions of us, please send uh, your queries to livingwithsunny at round.glass. Thomas, um, what a conversation. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I like the fact he kept bringing in his own personal experience, right? He made it... Which was... Which is very special, yeah. He made it about his life and... It was nice that it just took the washing up to tip him over the side. I believe you have to live it to talk about it. In my life too, you know, I've gone through burnouts and stresses uh, at different uh, times for different reasons, personally and professionally. Uh, whether it's family-centric, whether it's my social-centric with my friends, uh, colleagues, professional colleagues, um, you know, being a founder, uh, running teams, leading teams, being intense. You know, I can relate to him. 